And welcome to the Real Estate Coffee Break. I'm your host, John Adams, along with our very special guest here in January, Dykes Bodiford. Hello, Dykes. How are you, my friend? Hello, John. Thank you for having me on. I certainly appreciate the opportunity. Well, we are thrilled to have you. Um, I saw that uh, another part of our presentation today has been a video from Warren Buffett who said real estate is a lousy investment. <laughs> and uh, I have decided to, to, I won't take issue with Warren Buffett. I'm not sure you can actually do that, but, but I will beg to differ and say that I think he means from a um, institutional standpoint, if you're limited as he is to investing in REITs and massive commercial developments, his point is it's too competitive. But you've made a career in investing in things that maybe other people might not be interested in. Dykes, how has that worked? And why do you think real estate is going to be an opportunity for us in 2022? Well, people have to have somewhere to live. It's a necessity. It's not, uh, it's not something that uh, you can play around with. That. Uh, and I think that the, the prices are going to pretty much hold up during 22, uh, mainly because the inventory uh, amount is low and the cost of materials are so high for building new properties. So I, I think it's going to hold up for a while and I think it's going to make uh, good money for those that already own property. And the ones that don't own property, it, uh, I think you need to be looking at getting into owning some property. You may not go gangbusters and buying property until the price is settle in and, and maybe even uh, dip a little bit, which is going to happen in the next few years. It always does. But uh, I think it, it's one of the best places that you can invest your money and time. Remember, most other investments don't allow you to gain something from the time you put into it, but real estate does. That's called sweat equity. And that's what brought me into real estate to start with because I didn't have no money. You know, it's interesting. Um, our friend um, John Schaub talks about buying one house a year. And, yeah. and I've heard you say that a real danger is for people to, to get overly enthusiastic and try to go out and buy 10 or 15 properties uh, all at once. I'm assuming you are still not advising people to do that. I am certainly not advising people to do that. You will learn so much. You go to every class that's out there, read every book on Amazon, and you still won't know the, the a good deal and how to deal with the property until you actually own one. So go buy a property and don't buy your next property until you feel comfortable with the, that you know how to deal with the property itself and you know how to deal with the tenants. Remember, the asset is not the property. The assets are tenants. You need to know how to deal with those tenants. That's a, that's a lifelong learning situation there. Boy, it sure is. And, you know, meeting their needs without letting them walk all over you is as much an art as it is a science, I think. And you're right. It's, it's a, um, a lifelong skill, something that we have to keep practicing. But, but uh, I agree 100%. Well, listen, you had some New Year's ideas that you were kind enough to share with us. Dykes, I'm going to go to those now um, on the screen. And uh, I wonder if we could just sort of talk about them together and, and see what you had in mind. So sure. let me advance to your first slide here. And this says, if you already own property. Um, and so I'm going to take advantage of you for just a second here. If someone is listening or they're watching right now on the coffee break and they're, this, they're just brand new to this, I mean, they, they think it's an interesting topic, but they don't even own the home they live in. What would your advice be to somebody who's just getting started? Um, or, or should they run out and buy a house or, or what if they don't own property? If you don't own property, you need to evaluate your situation financially to begin with. Uh, you need to have an emergency fund. If you haven't built your emergency fund yet, that's the first thing you need to do. I don't need to talk about that because Dave Ramsey and there's so many other speakers, including you, John, have talked about building an emergency fund because you never know when cars going to uh, uh, blank out on you. Uh, kids need uh, the doctor. 
uh, or something else uh, breaks and you've got to, to come up with the cash. You don't want to be putting all that on credit cards. You want to feel comfortable that uh, you have the capital to, to take care of the problem. But as soon as you do, you reach whatever level you feel comfortable with in your emergency fund, then you need to start looking at property. Now, you can buy a property with no money down. That is very easy. I shouldn't say easy to do, but it's very common. You've done it, John. I've done it. It's not something that, uh, that it takes a tremendous amount of expertise. But understand, when you buy for no money down, most of the time, probably 85% of the time, you're buying at market or even above market either because of the terms or because of the price that you've agreed on. So be careful with that. You just need to, to have a good education as well as you can get uh, up front and then start looking at houses. And don't let it, uh, let it beat you up if you don't get the first house you uh, put a contract on, uh, even the 50th house. Uh, I've heard several speakers say that uh, they suggest you do 100 houses before you uh, get serious and actually buy one but i don't think it, it didn't take me that many but i i imagine i looked at 40 to 60 and made offers on 40 to 60 before i got my first uh, deal um, another problem that people run into is they think they've got to get a deep discounted property uh, purchase and that's the only way that they they feel like the only way they can make money is to make it going into the property well john you and i know we've been in this business long enough that we know that even if you make a bad investment as long as it's a good property you'll work out of that over a period of years and actually make money on it just maybe not as much as you would have otherwise but it's not a reason to to wait for the next five years to find a good deal you know it's it's interesting uh this goes all the way back to carlton sheets who you may remember from many many uh, late night tv shows and so forth but basically his philosophy was first you've got to see a lot of houses and then second you have to make a lot of offers right and and his idea was that we're looking for someone who is highly motivated to be done with their real estate for whatever reason um, and if you can help that person meet their needs uh, you may end up with a good opportunity there absolutely and and, and I've always taken the position, I know you have too, I would love to do business with that person again. I'd, I'd, in fact, I have. We bought, <laughs> we bought a church one time, Dykes, and then we ended up buying six or seven houses from the parishioners of that church. <laughs> As the preacher kept recommending, we'll call Brother Adams, he'll take care uh -huh. of it. So uh, I, I figured God was looking over my shoulder on that one, but taking let, care of you. yeah. So let's let's look at your your thoughts here. You mentioned do a portfolio evaluation, Dykes. What would that entail? Well, uh, portfolio evaluation has helped me over the years, and I think it's helped a lot of other people that I've talked uh, to about doing it. And basically, it's just making a spreadsheet. Uh, it doesn't have to be line graph paper. Just take a piece of notebook paper, put some column, make some columns, and head those columns with both subjective and objective uh, criteria, such as ease of maintenance, um, uh, the cash flow on the property, net cash flow on the property, uh, ease of of uh, getting a renter, uh, quality of the renters for that uh, neighborhood. Uh, quality of the property. You can you can head up uh, as many columns as you want or as few as you want. My experience is no matter what you uh, list, uh, you're going to come out with pretty much the same answer anyway. And that is this. You're going to go uh, have each house listed on the left-hand side and then you're going to start out with the first column, uh, ease of rental. Uh, and you can do one to five, one to 10, or as John Mangum says, and you just told me about, uh, ABC. And I, I, you'll chime in on that a little later. But you can do any of these and then look at your totals for all of your properties over all the columns, add them up, and you'll find that there's a, there's one or two or three houses that are coming up on the bottom and in any of the criteria that you uh, have, except for maybe a couple of uh, criteria. And that's a house you need to target to um, get out of in the next year as part of your year in or your year coming up resolution. 
because you, you need to move out of the properties that are either taking a lot of your mental energy or taking a lot of your physical energy or taking a lot of your physical dollars and move into something that you don't have to worry so much about. When you put a tenant in, they're in there for five to seven years, not for six months to a year. Uh, the the uh, uh, systems aren't breaking down left and right. You might have to put an air conditioner in or uh, put a new roof on, but that's, you know, that's expected. You know, houses do deteriorate over a period of time. Well, Dykes, I have something that's going to eat up everything. You got yeah, it. I have to share with you. You have heard me complain, I know, over the years about these two houses that I bought up in Liberty Commons subdivision, which apparently is somewhere in Kennesaw or Ackworth. I don't that's know where. The, was that the builders, the um, builders uh, model? Uh, model homes. I bought two yeah. model homes, sight unseen, um, with with a lease from the builder for at least two years with an option for a third and fourth year while right. he built out the subdivision. So it was cash flow from day one. I was, you know, I didn't even have to go out there. And the deal was when he got done with it, he would return it to brand new condition. And then uh, he had a, a, a property manager up there who was ready to take it over and rent it on day one. So I thought, man, this is good for me. Well, the problem I had, Dykes, was that if you get out a map and try to go from Decatur to Ackworth, it's physically impossible. Yeah. There, there are no roads that go there. One time <laughs> I tried and I ended up in Dalton. I bought some carpet, turned around, came back, and I thought, well, I'll just catch it on the way back. But before I could stop, I'd slid all the way to 285. And anyway, I finally sold the last one of those <laughs> last year. <laughs> there was my point here is in terms of your property evaluation, there was nothing wrong with those homes. It was a John problem. Yeah. I it was not convenient to me. Therefore, it represented a problem. So when the yeah. when when the uh, manager called and said, "Look, somebody needs to cut this tree down. We can do it for twelve thousand dollars." And yeah. I said, "Whoa, whoa, let's find somebody local." Well, I couldn't meet anybody there because I didn't know how to get there, and it was impossible anyway. And that was not the house's problem. Yeah. That was that was my problem. And so yeah. I think it's interesting that sometimes in our evaluation, we're not just looking at the house, but we're looking at ourselves right. and what, what our abilities are. The next thing you'd said here was do an entity evaluation. What is that all about? Yeah, well, you need to periodically look at how you're holding the properties or you, you have them all in your own name, which is perfectly fine if you only have one or two properties. But as you gain more properties, you're showing up on the records more and more. And all of a sudden you become uh, viewed as one of those rich landlords. And you may be living penny to penny, depending on every rent to make all your payments, but they still consider you a rich landlord. So instead of being having your name over the public records uh, and also the, the possibility of getting sued uh, you know, if by a tenant or a contract or whatever, uh, you want those houses in an entity like a LLC or a land trust uh, or some combination, maybe in a corporation if it's a quick turn property for tax reasons. So you need to evaluate what your entities are, how much you have in each entity, how much exposure to liability you've got, and what kind of tax picture does that paint. So you need to look at entities uh, periodically once a year is certainly uh, the minimum to, to do that. Um, I'm going to uh, take the liberty of bragging on you just a little bit. You wrote a book that was instrumental in my, uh, Margie and me did a evaluation based on this book. You wrote it called Entity Selection. Is that book still around? No, John, I had to retire that book. I, I just did, couldn't keep up with uh, all the information and detailed enough in a small little book. I still have the class, uh, uh, home study class on corporations, LLCs, and other asset protections. Well, I'm going to recommend to everybody within the sound of my voice that they go to your website at assets, that's A-S-S, 
ETS101.com for two reasons. One is you've got a, a great um, wealth of informational material that's uh, available there. But also on the front page is a picture of your good looking daughter. And we don't have to just stare at you. How is Dorsey <laughs> doing these days? I know she's happily married. She's got a baby. I understand there's one on the way. That's right. She's due for with a second uh, baby in May of this coming year. It's going to be a girl. So we'll have two grandchildren as girls. Well, congratulations to you and to to her and her husband. And uh, I just, I she was, I remember as a very, I call her a youngster. I think she was in high school or college and uh, she would tag along with you to some of the events that you and I were involved in. And I just always thought what's going on in her mind with her dad talking about <laughs> hard money lending and assets and so forth. Yeah. And she's, she's done right well, hadn't she? She has, uh, she got it out of Georgia tech and said, dad, I don't want to go work for somebody else. I want to work on my own. So we, I told her she could try it if she wanted to, and she did, and she did was very successful at it. Okay, so back to our entity evaluation here. The next thing you have uh, is what are your biggest problems? And by that, what direction are you wanting us to look at? Well, if you own property, certainly the, the, it's obvious that you need to look at what are your biggest problems with the property that you already own. If you don't own property yet, what's the biggest problem in your life that's keeping you from investing? And once you get the answer to that, then you can make it use as part of your plan how you're going to overcome that problem or problems. And you keep them foremost in your mind, you'll find a solution much quicker than just doing this once, putting it in your desk, and waiting the next January 1st. It's interesting to me. Uh, I'll never forget. I talked to somebody years and years ago and I said, when is the right time to buy real estate? And they said, you know, there's never a right time. It's a little bit like having a baby. Um, you just have to make up your mind and say, we're going to do everything we can to make this happen. But if you wait for the right time, it may not ever come. Yeah. And if you uh, focus on your challenges and your problems and address those head on, it makes sense that that would help prepare you to be in a position to make an offer uh, when when a pretty good deal comes along. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. I bought my first three properties in 1980 and 81. And there's John, you and I were around uh, that time. A lot of the listeners probably weren't. That's that was when interest rates hit uh, 18%. Uh, oh. That was FHA interest rates. Yeah, yeah. So hard money rates were 25, 30%. So I bought my first three houses because nobody else was out looking at property and therefore the sellers had dropped to rock bottom prices because they couldn't get even people interested in it. You know, it, it, it's, you talk about competition and there wasn't a lot of competition at that time. And people say that there is so much competition now. And yet um, I think about market in, inefficiencies and one of those inefficiencies is when you've got a seller who is highly motivated for some reason, maybe it's family, maybe it's financial, maybe it's health, maybe it's job loss or death in the family, heaven forbid, whatever. Um, things happen in people's lives. That's not going to change. And our market, we've got what? 2 million residences in Metro Atlanta alone. Mm -hmm. And we need more, as you pointed out. Um, I don't think it's possible for the market to operate efficiently. For example, if, if you or I bought a share of Coca-Cola uh, from Fidelity Investments, we would know that at that moment, that's what Coke was selling for. Right. And it's the same, whether you buy it from Charles Schwab or whoever, at that moment, that's what, but with a piece of real estate, it's not that way. And by understanding other people's problems, we can structure win-win transactions that benefit the seller and right. benefit us. And I know you've done a lot of that. And one of the things people have always liked me too about your training is that you go into deals with a win-win 
philosophy. Would you elaborate on that a little bit? How does that work? Well, John, a lot of people think there's only win-lose, that one person uh, is going to win, the other person is going to lose. Well, that's not necessarily true. It's finding out what the other person's hot buttons are. Let them win on the things that are their hot buttons so that you can win on the things that are your hot buttons. And sometimes that takes a uh, compromise. You got, I got to also remember how many houses do you need? 10 houses, free and clear is all that you really need. So how hard is it to buy 10 houses if you're going to be investing for 20 or 30 years? Not that hard, yeah. even if you buy them at market. So I, I think, uh, I think, that, uh, that this is something that anybody can uh, pretty much do. It doesn't take any PhDs, that's for sure. As you know, I graduated in my class at Emory, summa cum difficulty. <laughs> I, I was in the third of my class uh, that made the upper two thirds possible. So, uh, um, and then this is interesting to me, even if you own no property now, do a business plan. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people will talk about making up budgets, making up goals. Any business that, that's out there, or any investment company that's out there is going to do a business plan. So if, if the big guys do the business plans, why don't you do a business plan as an individual and then hold yourself to that? Uh, review it periodically, at least once a month to once a quarter. And if you need to revise the plan, revise it. But that will keep in the front of your mind what your objectives are for that year and what you're trying to accomplish. So that's what a business plan will do. If you only own property, it's going to be dealing with property you already own plus new properties that you might want to buy or, or plan to buy. If you own no property now, business plan is about getting everything ready and buying something. Uh, a lot of people are always getting prepared to invest and that, you can't do that forever. Business plan will hold your feet to the fire on a timeline. You know, it's uh, it is interesting because um, I, I, there are so many people that appear to me to get bogged down in the paralysis of analysis. Right. And I, cer I certainly understand the importance of, of, you know, looking before you leap. But the reality is the deal of a lifetime will come along about once a month if you're looking for it. Right. But if, if you don't act quickly, somebody else is going to buy that deal of a lifetime. That's right. You so, got to put yourself in the way of opportunity. Exactly. Exactly. That's, I've always said that about the Marines. You want to get in the action, join the Marines, buddy. <laughs> be there first, you know. So uh, there's one more thing here I do want to touch on. And uh, we had mentioned the ABC test. We're not going to have time for that today. But I do want to focus on a SWOT test because I think it's a little bit the same as what you were thinking of as a property evaluation. And here is just a uh, a simple form, Dykes, that asks you in any situation, whether it's a particular house you're considering, or even if you're looking at yourself, this would be a good, I think, self-assessment, as if you don't own real estate, let's talk about um, John Adams wants to buy his first house in 2022. Okay, mm -hmm. what, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What opportunities are out there and what are the threats? And I'm going to ask you real quickly just to address the opportunities that you see out there in 2022, whether it's for, and by the way, that's going to lead us to a mentioning of your hard money lending class, which is coming up in February of this year. Folks can learn more at assets101.com. That's A S S E. TS101.com. And, uh, but talk a little about opportunities you see for 2022. Well, the opportunities uh, involve properties and, and property owners that uh, think this is a high market and they can't buy anything. Uh, so, uh, but they need to sell because their job moves them or they quit the job. You know, this is this is a, a time when a lot of people are resigning from their uh, jobs they've had for years because there's so many openings that they can move to something else and make more money. 
Well, that may involve a move from one side of the city to the other, or from one city across the country, whatever. So there are opportunities out there of houses that can be purchased and not in the real estate um, uh, broker's um, uh, listing, right. but rather individuals. So you might uh, study up on knocking on doors uh, like the, the old vacuum cleaner salesman and, uh, and find out what, uh, what's going on in the neighborhood by talking to several people that you might see out gardening or cleaning up the yards not in 27 degree weather like we've had uh, this <laughs> today, but on nice, warm, sunny days. Uh, I did a lot of driving around, talking to people uh, working in their yards uh, on Saturdays and Sundays while I worked for somebody else. That's how I found several of my houses. So it's, there's it's, always yeah. opportunities. Yeah, there sure is. It's, uh, and I thought it was interesting that you said not necessarily in the multiple listing service. That's right. I, I think it's important to recognize that um, once it has made it into the MLS, the likelihood of it being a particularly good deal for you decreases dramatically, at least in my opinion. That's and right. and if we can find, I'll tell you who I have run into this year is already, and today is just what, the uh, January 8th, Saturday the 8th, I've had more than one senior landlord call me and say, John, we did what you said. We bought 10 houses. We own them all free and clear. And we're getting to that age where we don't want to fool with them anymore. And we are stunned at the prices people are talking about. Would this be a good time to sell? And these people are thinking, Dykes, about selling to the tenants and taking back paper. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts? What are your thoughts? I think that can be a good way to play the end game where you want to ease out of the daily um, uh, mishmash of fixing property and trying to get new tenants in and all and giving the tenant a good place to live uh, for their life uh, as well. And uh, you get a good income, you got a good collateral, you know the collateral. If for some reason they fall out and default and don't pay you, then you can always take the property back over, either get them to sign it back over to you, or even if you have to go to the uh, foreclosure process, which by the way, Georgia's got some of the best foreclosure law in the country, uh, you can get that property back. So I think selling to the tenant is, is a good, um, and it actually, it's an exemption under the uh, Dodd-Frank rules as well. So you don't have to worry about any, any uh, uh, problems with the government uh, saying you shouldn't have sold to a property, to a, a homeowner occupant. Well, I spend all my time worried about what the government thinks. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they want that's, you to do. <laughs> that's right. Let's, let's try to avoid that. Last but not least, you have a program coming up. I'm going to look real quick and double check because I want to make sure we get the dates correct. And you were right. I have, uh, now that's a, a hard money lending online class. This begins February 21st, and this is going to be on the internet platform. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct is for those people that have money just sitting, either investors that have sold some property and just have money sitting and uh, not really looking for another property right now, is for people that are in their uh, retirement uh, phase of their, their lives, like I kind of am semi-retired, uh, that have capital available. Maybe you have uh, capital in a self-directed IRA or 401k, solo 401k, or there's family money, uh, your mother, your uncle, whatever, has some money. And you know enough about property to know what's a good deal and what's not, and about uh, how to get it fixed up if you had to take it over. And you make loans to commercial users. That's people that are going to do flipping of property, or they're going to buy a property and fix it up and rent it out. And they, they may have a problem that they can't get money from the banks. They own too many properties. Their credit took a, a ding for some reason, maybe at medical bills or whatever, uh, or the, the property needs to be fixed up before it can get permanent financing. Those are all reasons they might come to a hard money lender who might charge anywhere from eight to 15% uh, for the money. And it's short-term loans, uh, six months to a year. 
So uh, I've got a 300 page manual that comes along with the class and we actually send out the physical manual to those who have signed up for the class. It's going to be uh, uh, online, it's about uh, 12 hours of class online. Uh, we're gonna have live Q and A sessions, uh, three evenings, uh, which are also gonna be recorded and available for everybody to see during the, the time the class goes on. And uh, the class um, uh, actually runs about two and a half to three weeks. Uh, and you get to look at the videos anytime you want to, but then we keep all that available to the, the attendees for another month so they can go back and study things that uh, they weren't sure about or wanted to, to bone up on. There's so a lot of text any, in the manual. Go ahead. Yeah, if, if anybody's worried about Dykes, your physical safety, you will actually be broadcasting from an underground bunker in an <laughs> undisclosed location so yeah. that no, no harm can come to you or them by participating. Is that correct? Well, I certainly hope not. <laughs> you know, Margie and I have been to uh, most, if not all of your classes, Dykes. Sure. They are entertaining, but more importantly, they meet a need that uh, is particularly um, important for people that are, as you say, uh, in a position in life where they may have accumulated a little bit of cash. It may be in a retirement vehicle. And you have really been on the forefront of helping people take those retirement funds and make something of them that couldn't have been, couldn't have happened in just a savings account or the right. stock market or, or whatever. And I want to thank you for that personally. I know a lot of people listening right now um, also owe you a, a debt of gratitude, but for people that don't know you, um, they should go directly to assets101.com. We'll have this posted at our real estate coffee break site as well and direct people right over to you because it's a great class. And I know one that uh, people will really benefit from. So, and now you're just giving this away. Is that correct? This is free. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> I'm a hey, capitalist. It, it was worth a try. <laughs> I thought maybe while we had you here live on the coffee break, you'd you'd break down and invite all my people, but that's yeah. okay. It is, you know, for anybody that's going to be serious about this, it is an investment that is well worthwhile. Dykes, any final words? I'm going to turn off our, our shared screen here and, and just let you uh, take the microphone. One, we really appreciate you joining us on this short notice, but helping us get off to a good start in 2022. Any final words for folks joining us right now? Well, one thing I want to uh, make sure is the people that are listening don't wait until next January of 23 and say, I wish I had done something. I want to hear uh, from you that you've made plans and you have uh, executed those plans in improving your portfolio. Maybe you don't buy any new properties during this coming year, uh, but improve your portfolio, improve your tenants. You need to learn about landlording. John, you teach a class on landlording that uh, I think was very valuable. And your, your, uh, um, your guide, your- Landlord uh, survival guide. Landlord yeah. survival guide, survival is what I was trying to remember. Uh, it's so good. And I still got a uh, uh, copy on the shelf that I have reviewed even after I'd been in the business 20 something years, you know, I was still, uh, and I still do, except now I'd have, uh, both the property managers for properties I have, uh, still that I still hold. And then a few properties I got uh, under a, uh, master lease with a investor that, uh, manages the property and we share in the profits. So, you know, it, it's, it's something that you need to, to do and learn, and over 22, take the time to solve those problems that you have and increase your investment, increase your portfolio. Great advice from a great trainer and a, a longtime friend. Please give our love to Miss Debbie and tell her we're thinking about her and, and uh, hope she gets a complete recovery real soon. And uh, wish Thank you, you tremendous continued success. And by the way, Margie in the background says, hey, Dykes. <laughs> okay, tell Margie I said hi, too. 
I promise I'll do it. Dag right. Spotiford, assets101.com. We'll see you real soon. See Thanks, Dags. Bye, Bye now.